Hello, and welcome to Baltic Ways, a podcast bringing you interviews and insights from the world of Baltic studies. I'm your host, Dr. Indra Ekmanis. And today, we have a special interview, as I had the chance to speak with Edgar Sinkevich, Latvia's Minister of Foreign Affairs. We speak about the global shifts he has seen during his 10 years in this leading diplomatic role, current challenges facing Europe, balancing the transatlantic perspectives on Russia and China, and the future and where Latvia is positioned to lead. Stay tuned. Minister Rinkevich, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me on the Baltic Ways podcast. You have been a stable face in the Latvian foreign policy scene for exactly 10 years. We're speaking on October 25th, which I believe marks your 10-year anniversary serving as the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And I wonder, from your perspective, if you can speak a little bit about the major shifts that you have seen over the past decade, or have foreign policy challenges largely stayed the same over the last 10 years? Well, that's a very good question, because uh, I think that the foreign policy goals of Latvia are the same. That's strengthening security and independence, promoting economic cooperation and trade and investment, and uh, definitely also in a global world, and we live in a global world, it is also to keep in touch and to support our uh, diaspora our community throughout the world. If we speak about the environment, then of course, it has changed enormously. I think that 10 years ago, we were very much discussing how to, let's say, promote trade relations with neighbors, how to promote trade relations with countries globally, how to get more European financing to our development projects, especially keeping up economic growth just after the financial crisis of 2008, 2010. And then what happened was the Crimea occupation by Russia, also migration crisis of 2015, Brexit in 2016, also challenges that we have seen in transatlantic relations, also more assertive China, as never before. So actually, I would say that the world has now become rather very fragile when it comes to the things that we thought uh, are self-evident, international law and order. I think that there are growing differences of what we consider basic values, universal values, human rights, rule of law, democracy. So it's a much more challenging, much more fragile, and things we assumed will last forever actually are changing dramatically. Yes, absolutely. The foreign policy perspective perhaps has stayed the same, but but the world around it has changed quite significantly in the past 10 years. You mentioned human rights and migration crises, and of course, Latvia, Lithuania, and Poland in particular right now are dealing with this migration crisis on their border with Belarus. And in some ways, this is a a crisis precipitated by Baltic and European support for the pro-democracy movement and human rights in, in Belarus itself. But I wonder, how can Latvia balance its commitments to human rights for migrants and asylum seekers with what the European Union has has acknowledged is a a hybrid attack from the Lukashenko regime? Well, I think that this is what we are currently trying to work out, the right balance between protecting European borders, also to fight what we define as the hybrid operation by Lukashenko's regime, On one hand, and on the other hand, yes, there are still requirements also to uh, safeguard human rights. I do believe that this current hybrid operation shows that we need to amend European legislation. And we still need to look on ways how to counter, let's say, 
uh, human trafficking and uh, smuggling organized by states in order to change the policies of the European Union. By the way, what is happening on the border between Latvia and Belarus, Lithuania and Belarus, and Poland and Belarus is not a unique thing. The same challenges Greece faced in the beginning of 2020. We also see the Spanish example. So we see that actually uh, migration has become a new frontier in hybrid warfare. And the response here, of course, is rather dramatic. But I think that the Latvian government also has found the right balance. Because, yes, we do not allow crossing of the border when we see that this is orchestrated by Lukashenko, that we see that those people who are trying to cross the border are not in any, let's say, medical emergency, that those are not families with small children, but uh, people who require medical assistance. Families with small children, especially when it comes to very small children or, or pregnant, pregnant women, those are being admitted. And of course, then their requests for asylum are being processed in accordance with a national legislation. However, I also want to say that we also cannot uh, allow the situation spiral out of the control because even by admitting thousands of uh, people and then starting to process uh, their asylum applications, we could come to the point where we wouldn't be able to hold them in uh, normal conditions. And this is the winter approaching. You can't put them in tents. We also cannot, let's say, afford this uh, situation go out in the control when it comes to the ability simply to provide necessary support to them. And final point here, uh, what we have seen so far, that many of those people who crossed the border and in accordance with Latvian and European legislation, they should apply for asylum in the first European country. Those people are immediately trying to move to Germany, to, to, to other countries. And I think that also this uh, is creating now already understanding that so-called secondary migration needs to be addressed. So I expect that we are going to come to major reform of migration legislation within European Union as well. It's not going to happen today or tomorrow. But I think that realization that you cannot apply any more legislation that has been developed under different circumstances is growing. Mm, that idea that European legislation has to evolve with a changing world. And speaking in that same vein, the current diplomatic relations between Russia and NATO appear to be deteriorating. And I'm, I'm thinking of the suspension of the Russian delegation to the alliance and now and NATO defense ministers reaffirming their strong position in deterrence against Russia in both conventional and hybrid warfare. And meanwhile, there's also a growing transatlantic focus on China, particularly a focus that's coming from the United States on China. Where do you think Latvia sees itself in addressing these sorts of dual challenges from Moscow and Beijing? Well, we see ourselves as active NATO member. We do believe that NATO needs to address both challenges. At the same time, NATO should not forget that its core function is defense of its territory and allies. And I think that we are closer to Russia geographically as NATO than to China. I think that's that's the answer to it. I think that we need to have a good discussion how we are going to counter those two challenges. We should not lose the sight of real issues facing alliance, but also we need to work with our allies also to counter counter more assertive foreign policy, geopolitical direction of, of China, also to look how we can protect our cyber uh, space, how to protect our critical infrastructure, how to 
do investment screening properly and to coordinate that within NATO as well as EU and also to have a very active, regular and strong consultations between the United States and Canada and European partners of NATO. I think that we are on the right track. Through consultations, it doesn't mean that we always are going to accept US view or the US should accept always what Europeans think. No, at the end of the day, it may also be some different views and maybe different policies and that or other things. But having said that, it should not mean that we completely develop, uh, let's say, separate policies and then being separated, US and Europe actually is weaker rather than stronger. Mm, underscoring the fundamental role of the alliance and that transatlantic unity. Mm-hmm. I want to just ask one last question, and we're here at 10 years in your work, and I wonder what you see as the major foreign policy challenges and priorities for Latvia and Europe in the future, and if there are any areas where you see that the Baltic states or Latvia can lead. Well, first of all, I think that when it comes to Europe, it is really important to find a way how we address common values issues. You know that There are now huge discussions about uh, human rights, rule of law, democracy, and uh, basically not all member states see those issues the same way. I think it's very important to discuss different views in a way that is not divisive, but actually uh, strengthens European unity. That's for Europe. For Europe also, I would say, the need to develop more defense capability, uh, which is complementary to NATO, is an absolute must. But it's uh, also something that we always underline that it has to be complementary to the alliance rather than to make a kind of unnecessary competition. Uh, And that also includes strong transatlantic links and dialogue. Uh, Second, I do believe that Uh, We need to strengthen within Europe our past digital and green economy. I think that we are well suited to become leaders. And again, here, I think that you should not be shy on what it has already achieved and it may move forward. And then on the competencies for Latvia, well, you know, We are strong on on digital issues. We are strong on some of initiatives when it comes to the Green Deal. But what I have seen uh, is that when it comes to foreign policy, we already have developed and we must continue that a very strong understanding on disinformation, on media literacy, on media freedom, both online and offline. I think that those are issues where we have achieved a lot. Together with Australia, we have co-sponsored the first UN General Assembly resolution on media literacy, on the need to to fight against uh, disinformation. During COVID pandemic, we see that fake news, disinformation, anti-vaccine movement, anti-COVID movement, has gained the strength. We understand that we need to work out the code of conduct for social media. You cannot simply let this continue the way as it is that, let's say, the normal media gets all the protective mechanisms against fake news. There is some responsibility. And then social media basically is the platform where everyone can post or share whatever he or she wants, not bearing any responsibility, but that actually costs people's lives to to some extent. Mm -hmm. So uh, leading this fight on disinformation is something where I see that Latvia has achieved a lot, is is a leader, and it should continue doing that. And that's our niche capability when it comes to the foreign and not only foreign policy. Well, I want to thank you so much, Minister Rinkevich, for taking the time to speak with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And as we speak, I see that uh, in Washington, there is quite uh, heavy showers right now. Sirsnik spaldies. Spaldies, vis labu. Vis labu.
Thank you for tuning in to Baltic Ways, a podcast from the Association for the Advancement of Baltic Studies, produced in partnership with the Baltic Initiative at the Foreign Policy Research Institute. A note that the views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of AABS or FPRI. I'm your host, Dr. Indra Ekmanis. Subscribe to our newsletters at aabs-balticstudies.org and fpri.org slash baltic-initiative for more from the world of Baltic studies. Thanks for listening. See you next time.